Hey folks, all right. So uh, in the previous video for, for static equilibrium, we actually talked about something called center of mass. And, and again, we're gonna need to know where that's at uh, in order to uh, basically talk about static equilibrium. But the rest of, of this is static equilibrium. And static equilibrium means that something is not accelerating and something is not angularly accelerating. Uh, so typically the example we use is something at rest. Uh, technically something moving at a constant velocity is also in, in equilibrium. But in this case, we're gonna talk about static equilibrium, which means it is at rest, okay? So if the acceleration of an object is zero, what do we know? Well, we know that net force is zero, okay? And if something's angular acceleration is zero, it's not rolling or quickly, more quickly or more slowly or speeding up or slowing down its spin rate, then what do we know? In other words, if alpha is zero, what do we know? Well, then net torque is going to equal zero, okay? So um, basically, that is all of um, static equilibrium. Uh, at this point, that's the whole, that's the whole chapter, um, chapter 12 in Giancoli. Uh, there's no new equations or anything. Uh, so basically we're done, right? Well, I we'll probably should probably do a few examples with you. So I'm going to do that. Now, the first thing I'm going to mention is, can one of these be, is there a situation for which one of these could be zero and the other one not? Okay, certainly. So for instance, let's say, how can I make the net force on something zero, but the net torque not zero? Well, something like this. Okay, that's an example. The net force is zero, but the net torque is not. It's going to spin clockwise, it's going to, or it's going to angularly accelerate clockwise, um, but it ain't going to move left or right or anything. So that's a case where net force is zero, but net torque is not. Um, how about the flip of that? Can we make an object with, or a situation with net force of not zero, but net torque is zero? Well, sure, I can do this, right? If I make those, the two forces equal there, um, the thing will not spin, it will not angularly accelerate, but it sure is going to accelerate to the, linearly accelerate to the right. So you can certainly have one of these be zero and the other one not. There's all kinds of situations you can come up with. The ones that we're going to deal with, though, are both net force and net torque are going to be zero. Okay. So, um, the, you know, in previous work we've done in here, like let's say I have the ground and I have a box. Okay, the box is in equilibrium, that force on it is zero, but uh, net torque is also zero, and that's a pretty easy example. But the forces here are pretty silly, right? You've got the normal force acting up on the object, and you have the force of gravity acting down, and they cancel, basically, if the thing's not accelerating up or down, there's other forces acting on it. Well, it gets a little trickier um, if you have objects that are extended. Um, so, for example, and this, this, this is one that came up with me in college that I can remember quite well. So let's say you got a baseball bat and hey, I've got one down here. Let me pull it up for here, move it over here for you guys, okay? So let's say you are holding the baseball bat with one hand about there, okay? And it's not moving, okay? So what a typical textbook question would be, what's the force and torque your hand must create in order to keep that bat still? Well, the center of mass of the bat would be, I don't know, somewhere around there. So you have the force of gravity acting on the bat. So your upward force would have to be equal to the bat's weight, force of gravity, wherever that is. Okay, so a couple pounds or whatever it is. Um, so that's easy enough. These would have to be equal for this to be in static equilibrium. Now, if that was all that was going on, this thing would start to spin this way. Okay, there, there'd be a net clockwise torque. So the thing would spin. So there's got to be something else going on with your hand here, okay? Well, your hand is applying a counterclockwise torque, okay? And that torque would equal the force of gravity times whatever that distance is, okay? Then, so when, when this qu uh, question came up, I was actually helping another student. I was like a sophomore engineering student. I was helping a freshman engineering student. They came with this kind of question. And they asked me, how, how does your hand create a, a counterclockwise torque? And I said, well, that's really easy, all right? So 
I actually, I think we had a meter stick or something in the, in the off the help room. And I had the student actually grab the meter stick with his hand. And so imagine, I'm just going to draw a clunky hand here. So imagine that's the person's hand. Well, what the forces that actually exist are, you have the force of gravity acting on the bat, at the center of mass. If you actually do this, if you actually hold something in your hand like this, like a baseball bat or something else, that especially something kind of the heavy side so you can really feel it, the bat will press on your hand. And what you'll feel is at, at, at this part of your hand, you'll feel the bat pressing down on you a lot, which means you are pressing up on the bat a lot. You'll also feel the, the end of the bat pushing um, up on your hand, which means your hand is actually pushing down on the bat there. So now this is a first order approximation. Th these two forces would actually be spread out over your hand, um, but this is kind of like an approximation. So and, and then let's say, for instance, that you measured this distance and it was one unit and this distance and it was seven. OK, then what would happen is um, this force here, if I were to balance torque about this axis, OK, this force would have to be seven times the force of gravity of the bat because one times seven has to equal seven times one. All right. That means this upward force would have to be eight times the force of gravity on the bat because you have two, two downward forces at equal eight times the weight of the bat. So you have to have an upward force of eight times the weight of the bat. So if you try this out, like literally try this out with any object and you hold the object like this, you'll feel that like on your hand, there are fairly large forces, significantly larger than the actual weight of the bat acting on your hand. Um, so that, that is how your hand creates a torque. There's actually more than one force going on at a time, okay? So I just wanted to mention that. Now, I do want to do one this like regular old example for you guys, and we'll throw some numbers in this one. So let's say that um, you and your friend are stealing a television set. Not, I don't recommend that, but let's say you were. So let's say you and your friend are holding a board. Okay, so here's, here's your friend. Okay, they've got one end of the board, and here's you. Okay, and you've got the other end of the board, all right? And the board, let's say the board has a weight, I'll call it little w of 40 pounds. Oh my gosh, we're gonna use pounds here. And yeah, we're gonna leave everything in pounds because that's what you guys are familiar with. And let's say you put the TV on the board like so. Now notice that the, 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 the TV is closer to one person than the other. So this person on the left is gonna, we'll call him A, and we'll call the person on the right B, a is going to have to hold hold more of the weight of this thing than B, okay? Let's say the big W, the weight of the TV set, let's say it's a really big one and it's 200 pounds just for fun. So how much of the, two, there's a total of 240 pounds here. How much of that will A have to hold and how much of that will B have to hold? Well, in order to do this, you first you draw an FBD, okay? So, uh, and you draw, you figure out which object has all the forces acting on it. Well, the board has all the forces acting on it. So I'm going to draw an FBD of the board. So here's that. And I'll even draw it the same size as the actual um, picture I just drew. So there's your board. Okay. What forces act on the board? Well, A is pushing up on this. So I'll just call that A. And person B is pushing up over here. I'll call that B. You have the weight of the board. And that's going to be dead center of the board. Okay, so that's little w, which is 40, okay? And then you have the TV. Now, I have to give you something here about where that TV is. Let's say that TV is one-third the length of the board away from person A, okay? Now, by the way, I'm not even going to give you the length of the board because you ain't going to need it. Once you know that ratio, once you know this is one-third, that's all you're going to need, okay? Um, now, tip: what's really happening is the normal force of the TV is pushing down the board, that normal force is going to equal 200 pounds. So I'm, I'm gonna still label that an FN, um, but it equals 200 pounds, so uh, because the TV is not moving. Um, so there you go, so there's your FBD, okay? Now, uh, the easy part of this is we're gonna use, we have our two conditions up here, net force equals zero and net torque equals zero. So if I do net force equals zero, and, and I'll say up is positive, 
Well, then we have a plus b uh, minus 200 minus 40 equals 0, or duh, a plus b is 240. Okay, so you could all guess that, right? Problem is, I don't know what a or b are, so I need another equation. So that's where your net torque comes into play. So we're going to do net torque equals 0. Okay, now here's the beauty of static equilibrium. You can pick any axis you want to measure torque around. It doesn't matter because the thing's not, not angularly accelerating at all. It's not spinning. So the net torque about any axis you pick is zero. So one of the keys on solving these problems is finding convenient axes to use. Okay. Typically, what I recommend to students is pick an axis through which at least one of your unknowns is passing. And that way, that unknown won't even be in the equation. So I'll use the left side of the board. That'll be my axis. And I'm going to say clockwise is positive torque about that axis, OK? Well, then if I do this, so then we have force A times torque is R cross F. So I'm just I'm, I'm going to do F times R and then make sure I put plus or minus. Well, what's the lever arm for A? Well, it's 0. It's on the axis. So A ain't causing any torque. And then we have Fn. That's trying to make the, the board spin clockwise. So it's a positive. And that would be 200 times one third of L, okay? Plus you have the weight of the board itself, 40. And now where's that gonna be? Well, that's the, that's the center of mass of the board, which was one half L. And then B is trying to make the board spin counterclockwise. So that's gonna be minus in our system. And then you're gonna have B times the length of the board. And because the board is in static equilibrium, we know this entire thing has to equal zero, okay? So um, what do we have here? Okay, so our first term is, is basically 67L, and then we have a plus a 20L. I'll move this over here. This equals BL. Hey, what happens to all the Ls? They drop out now, okay, because I gave you this fraction here. And you've got B. B equals about 87 pounds, okay? And then we know A plus B is 240, so we know that A has to be about 153 pounds. Okay, so that person on the left, they're definitely carrying a lot more of the, the load than person B. Okay, so um, the, the beauty of this is, again, you can pick any axis you want. You could have picked anywhere to put that X and measure torque about that point, and the equation would still work. Um, it's just sometimes it's easier to put that X either at A or you could have put the X at B and it would have been just as convenient. Notice that when we put the axis at, at A, the only unknown in the entire equation was B. So we immediately solved for B, okay? So um, we'll do some more practice with that as we go. Um, I hope that video was helpful and thank you very much.